In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. He is, he was, and ever shall be. Let me let you know how I normally prepare for a sermon. When Father asks me to give the sermon, I normally will read the Gospel reading and the Epistle reading, and then I will look and see which saints we commemorate on the Sunday that I have to give the sermon. This week, I noticed uh, one of the saints that we remembered today was Theodore the Studite. Knowing this, the passage from the epistle that drew my attention is verses 8 through 11. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. The passage that I just read really describes what the saints represent to us as Orthodox Christians. When we remember the saints, what do we really know about them? Well, we know that they are part of the tradition of the church. We know them from their icons, and we hear or read their names as they are repeated in the services. After that, we pretty much forget them and don't know much about them. Unless, of course, that saint happens to be our patron saint, and then perhaps we would like to know more about them and we read a little bit. Well, I would like to introduce you today to St. Theodore the Studite. Theodore lived in the 8th and 9th centuries and uh, he was a Byzantine monk who was the abbot of the monastery of St. John the Forerunner in a section of of Constantinople known as Studios. And this is why he is called Theodore the Studite. This monastery was significant in the church life of the empire for over 500 years. Its rule of life, written by St. Theodore, is followed today in many monasteries on Mount Athos, in monasteries around the world, and even in Holy Archangels, our neighboring monastery, whose feast we celebrated this last week. Theodore was a poet. He was an author. He was a scholar and a zealous defender of the separation of the church from the state. He defended the church's teachings and its doctrines, and most especially, he defended the use and veneration of icons in the church. Because of his convictions, he opposed heretical emperors and patriarchs. He was exiled and called back several times during his life. While he was in prison, he was starved, tortured, beaten, but he never ever gave in. He is the first church father to officially condemn slavery. You shall possess no slave, neither for domestic service nor for labor in the fields, for man is made in the image of God and is not to be a slave. Theodore is a man that we really should know more about, especially today. But in reality, we do without really recognizing it. He authored many hymns we sing, not only in the Triodion, getting ready for Easter, but also in Holy Week and throughout the year. With the staunch stands that he took, we might think of him as a rather rigid and stern monk. But in his over 500 letters, and sermons that are preserved for us, we see quite a different picture. He's revealed as a man of great sensitivity and compassion to both monks and lay people. He set a, 
a very high value on domestic married and family life. He once wrote a man who had lost his third child. It is sad for you, most sad, but it is far from being so for those who have been taken at so young an age that they were untouched by sin. Theirs is a blessed and perfect life in the bosom of Abraham where they glorify God with sweet song in the company of the holy innocents and of all other Christ-bearing children. As you can see by the short description, Theodore was a man of talent, conviction, and complexity. He pursued a Christian way of life, one characterized by prayer and the Holy Spirit. And yet he was not timid, nor did he separate himself from society. For Theodore, it was an obligation to proclaim orthodoxy openly, loudly, and unceasingly. When iconoclasm reappeared after the Second Nicene Council that officially uh, declared that icons were to be venerated, it came back, iconoclasm did, and Theodore's what he said when it came back, he said, the winter is over, but it is not yet spring. We wait for spring. In saying that, Theodore was expressing his deep love for the church and for holy icons. Theodore passed to the Lord while celebrating the divine liturgy on November 11th, 826, in the monastery of St. Trifon in Bithynia on the Black Sea. On the very same hour that he passed to the Lord, a monk praying in Dalmatia, which is now Croatia, saw this vision of bright light and heard this voice. This is the soul of the monk Theodore, having suffered even unto blood for the holy icons. It now departs unto the Lord. Imagine, over a thousand miles away, Theodore spoke to St. Eladion of his passing. Eighteen years later, on January the 26th, Theodore's relics, along with those of his brother, St. Uh, Joseph, Archbishop of Thessaloniki, were translated or moved from Bithynia back to the studious monastery in Constantinople. This day we also commemorate on January the 26th. We might ask, how should we today remember him on the 1192nd anniversary of his falling asleep in the Lord? The church remembered him and his fellow strugglers for the faith on the very first Sunday of Orthodoxy, March 11, 843, by these words. The Holy Trinity has glorified them by their contests, by their struggles, by their teachings, for the sake of the pure religion, even unto death. We entreat God that we might be guided and strengthened and beg that we might be shown to be imitators of their way of life until the end of our life by the pities and grace of the great first high priest, our Christ our true God, the intercessions of the most pure lady, the mother of God, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, and by the godlike angels and all the saints. Today, on the anniversary and the commemoration of Theodore of Studite, we must end as they ended their prayer. Theodore, the all-holy abbot of the Studites, may his memory be eternal. Amen. Grant that always being protected by your power, to you may offer up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Again we bow down before you and pray to you, good and loving God, hear our supplication. Cleanse our souls and bodies from every defilement of flesh and spirit and grant that we may stand before your holy altar without blame or condemnation. And grant also God progress in life, faith and faith and faith and faith, so that we may always worship you forever and love.